For the last five years, Drew's shop in Conwy, North Wales, has been an important part of the business and has a special place in his heart. Having a shop does make a statement, and that's why a lot of people will have it, but it's also a footing, it's your base, it gives people a confidence in what you are and who you are. And let's be perfectly honest with you, it's a very nice thing to own. I used to call it my toy box, and I'd go down there in the morning and move things around and play with furniture and hang different things on the wall and style it. And I love that, I love that. But with online trade gaining in strength, Drew's had an offer he can't refuse and come to a tough decision. We'll find a new location for this, which is a tricky, it's a tricky one. I've decided to sell the shop. But when it comes right down to it, it's another deal. We bought it, we restored it, it was perfect. And then somebody else really wanted it. And they literally made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So it's gone, it's sold, and it's on to the next thing. And that, I suppose, is my mentality of, of three decades of buying and selling things professionally is everything's got a price. Everything's got a price. We just have to have that mindset. As the whole operation prepares to undergo transformation, it's a critical time for the business. Today, Drew and T are heading almost 300 miles southeast to Sussex, where Drew's come across a rare buying opportunity which could give his new extended online venture a perfectly timed boost. We're on our way to see Michael Hall's school. It's as good as it gets. It really is. This is top notch. Honestly, schools are the perfect hunting ground. Are you fully expecting to be shouted at by a teacher? Well, every time I go to a school, right, to do a clearance or something, I get a twinge of terror and an unpleasant feeling. It fills me with dread. I would rather have my teeth filled, then go to school for a minute. Right. Located near East Grinstead, a picturesque town which has its roots in medieval times, the building that is now home to Michael Hall School was originally constructed for Lord Abergavenny in the 1730s. This Grade II listed Georgian mansion lies in 60 acres of parkland transformed in the early 19th century by prolific landscape designer Humphrey Repton. The house has been a private school since 1945, and today Drew and T are being shown around by estate manager Ian Howard. So this is Michael Hall School, wonderful place to be educated. I live and work here, and both my children go to school here. There's so much upkeep on the buildings and the grounds. We're always looking for like, creative ways to make money, raise money. We have so, so much stuff here that is just rotting away and should be loved by somebody else. Marvellous. Hello. Hi, good morning. How are you doing? Yeah. Welcome to Michael Hall. Wow. <laughs> I'm in love with the building already. It's the period of architecture that really gets me. Beautiful. So I'm going to be really boring all day. Should we go in and have a look? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We are in my idea of heaven. We're in a wonderful 18th century English country house, and there's bits that are exciting me all over this building. Right, we're, we're not even through the door, and there's a few things here. Instantly, these two tables. OK. I hadn't even crossed my mind. Uh... Well, Jacobean Revival, uh, 1920s to 40s, something like that, but still really quite a good-looking thing. Then that one there, which I should imagine you w at one time would have had lots of. We've got more, but not that size. Not, that's the biggest one. I think so. It's sort of a hayrake table, sort of. That style stretcher there. Oak, 1910 to 20, somewhere around there. Um, that would be of interest. I don't know if you want to get rid of that one or any of the others, but I'd be of interest. It's quite to possible. Them. I can show you the others as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good news for you is that it's not just a few hundred quid, they're quite valuable. OK. And I'd want to buy them all. Just stepping through the front door, immediately, can't miss it, there's two big dining tables. You've got a sort of Jacobean revival trestle table there in oak plank top, nice. And then across from it is a hay rake table. It's just got the most beautiful look to it. It's in the condition you want to find one in. It's utterly untouched, but it's been used a lot gently. That's exactly what you want. 
So we're going to go right down into the cellar now. Whoa. This is old. We thought it was an oak sink. Is that correct? It is. That's wow. available if you're interested. Yeah. That's a great thing. You I should going to weigh a ton. Yeah, that is really yeah, heavy. I think we're going to struggle with that. We can walk it round. Yeah. What do you think is? Oak construction. The way that the oak is cut for the frame is pit sawn. That's really old. That's just what you want to find. One of them is still lined in copper, which is patinated beautifully. That verdigris finish, that is, that is only attainable naturally. Not massively saleable and not hugely valuable, but a snapshot of time that I really want to own. Before sinks started to be produced in ceramic, they were made out of a variety of materials, including wood. This one is almost certainly as old as the house and was hand-sawn out of oak and lined in copper. All the steel straps, screws, even the plug hole, were probably hand-forged by a local blacksmith. Dating to the 18th century, it could be worth around 500 pounds. So it doesn't have a massive value, but it's worth more for a sort of, to me, as just a beautiful thing. 250. I mean, it's just here, it's doing nothing. Yeah. I, think, I think you're welcome to it if you want yeah. to. Yeah? Yeah. Sold, thank you. Might as well. Have, yeah, number, yeah, yeah. have number one. Fixed, cleaned, restored to nearly usable condition, we can probably make a profit on it. But if you're after one of these to make a period correct kitchen, this is the one you're going to want. And then we go down into the lower kitchen. Oh, after, wow. After you mean. Oh, my word. So, which I think, yeah, was, was the original kitchen. Uh, I don't know, these tables are similar to what you saw. These are lovely. The benches, which are usually pretty useless with these, are actually really quite nice. You want to get rid of these? Again, for me, these are just part of the furniture, so I'd not thought about selling them until you'd mentioned the one in the front. Um, I'm interested in all of them, okay. to be honest with you. They're a little bit narrow, but that's my problem, not yours. It does have the benefit of coming with these which is, is really quite nice. So, and these are original benches? These are original benches. The second, though, he opens the door, I can see a very well scrubbed top on some lovely old faded oak legs. Notice then it's two tables, not one, and underneath it are the original matching oak trestle-ended benches. Boom. This is what we're looking for. Oh, so today's going to be an expensive day. <laughs> I like the sound of that. OK. Uh, for what's in here, in this condition, £2,000. Really? Yep. In East Sussex, Drew and T have an extraordinary chance to buy from a school in a stunning Georgian mansion. I'm in love with the building already. It's the period of architecture that really gets me. In the lower kitchen, Drew's put a bid on two oak trestle tables with matching benches. Oh, so today's going to be an expensive day. <laughs> I like the sound of that. OK. Uh, for what's in here, in this condition, £2,000. Really? Yep. Well... Was that of interest? That's a consideration I never thought was going to come this way. Amazing. Incredible. I'm excited. Right, let's see the rest of them. For bigger purchases like these tables, Ian will have to get permission to sell them from the governors of the school. We have to now go back to the, the Board of Trustees to have a chat to one or the two of the people there, make sure that they're happy, put the bids on the table. We can go through into here. Oh, my, look at this. To what we call the Great Hall. So this is late George II, early George III, I think. Really? Yeah. Wow. What a blessing we have here. Exquisite early 18th century ballroom, including all of its original painted decoration. Unrestored, it's just been left alone. It's going to be a pain. Can I move this? No, of course you can. Yeah, he's not too heavy. Oh, God, look at that. Oh, <laughs> mate, seriously, look at, like, in all its splendour. This is a remarkable survivor. 
There's really? so many ways. You've got the original register grey, everything's bang on. The pictures on here, these are all on copper. Painted, hand -painted on, copper. on copper. Yeah, all of this, yeah. And then this is gilt wood in here. This is really rare. I mean, it's just incredible. It's amazing that it survived. Well, it's spectacular to know that, that that's fully original. The value means nothing. No. It's just the fact that it survived, and it's probably one of a handful, a handful in the world. I mean, that's the thing. It's not just rare. I mean, it's like there's, there's, there's none of them. Just a decorative item, big stack of brushes like that just looks great. You've done the right thing. Don't throw anything. It's got... There is value. There are people who will want this. No. OK. All right. So, anywhere else? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Have we apart seen, from, have we seen apart everything? Apart from the outside stone bench. He just mentions, oh, we've got an old stone bench lying around somewhere. Well, then my ears prick up. An old stone bench. Look where we are. We're in the 18th century. Tell me more. So, you know all I know is that it's been here for a fair while. I wouldn't have said it moved that often. It's heavy. It's heavy, yeah. It's an odd one. Would you sell it? If, it's, if historically we were allowed to, then possibly. If it's for sale, I'd have to send some stonemasons in to get it out correctly. You can't just let that be hoiked out. No. Amongst a very sort of scrubby, messy background, there is this phenomenal and large carved stone English garden seat. They don't come up for sale very often because they tend to get put somewhere and stay there. It looks for all the world like they had nowhere else to put it and they've dumped it up the top there. It's a rare old beast. So when you get offered something like this, you better dig deep and buy it because you're not going to get offered it every week. This carved stone seat dates to the Georgian period, when having the perfect garden view was the height of fashion. When the landscape architect Humphrey Repton was employed here in 1803, he almost certainly created one of his red books for his proposed garden design. These contained watercolour sketches of the grounds, with his alterations drawn on a semi-transparent overlay. Having seating positioned in exactly the right spot would have been an important part of the design. Dating to the late 18th century, this Georgian stone garden seat could be worth as much as £20,000. If I gave you a bid of 13500 for it, that would allow my 1500 quid to get it out, so I'm into it for fifteen grand. Well, that's highly considerable. Yeah. I can have a word with the trustees. It's an unusual design. I've not seen that before, but it is carved stone. It's great. It's an extraordinary size. This is the second one of these benches I've been offered in 29 years. The second one, OK? And I go out looking every single day of the week. That makes it something I really want to buy. So this is, you know, this is not without its work. But if you have a house like this anywhere in the world and you want a real stone garden bench for your garden, that's the one. And it's going to cost you, because you put that into a garden, it whacks the price of the building as a whole up. We can put it to the, to the trustees, is that all right? Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd like it. Turns out there's a guy in the village here who's going to come over, and he's one of the trustees, and we're going to be able to talk to him today. Uh, that's saving a lot of hassle. We're going to find out whether it's a yes or a no. I really hope it's a yes. Hello there. Hello. William. Hello. Hi. Welcome How are you doing? This is William. Hi. Right, so we've been looking at a few things. I believe you're the sort of person to yay or nay it, really. Yes, that's true. The stone bench yes. uh, up by what used to be the blue pool. That one I'd pay 13500 for. At where it is, and I'll remove it. 
Right. Deal? Yes. Thank you. It'll go to a good home and we'll put it back to as it should be. Along with the garden bench, Drew wants to buy the pair of oak kitchen trestle tables with benches for £2,000 and the oak table in the hall for £1,800. Well, I'm happy with the bench and the two tables in the lower kitchen. Yep. The oak table here in the hall, I think, is of very considerable value to the community here, and we'd okay. be less happy to part with that. Fine. We'll leave that. If you ever want to sell it in the, in the future, okay. ring me. That, I'm good. open to negotiation. I'd like to buy it. Good. Fine, let's go and good. do some paperwork. Thank two yeas and an A. Done. Eh? Two yeas and an A. Two yeas. That's yeah, all right. That's, that's, that's not a bad hit much. rate, is it? That's no. not a bad hit rate. So an, an interesting day, I managed to buy some early 20th century oak, oak refectory tables. Fab, no problem selling those, easy. A big oak sink, and then we buy something extraordinary. But we didn't get it for nothing. We're not quite finished with it yet. So the fun goes on with that one. Really enjoyed our time with, with Drew and T. Really good to explore and find out so much more about the history of the buildings. It's been a really interesting day. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So when we walked up to look at the garden bench, it was something I thought would be of interest to Drew, but after he filled us in on how old it may actually be and some of its provenance and how it was built in the first place, and it was just sitting there doing nothing, really good that he's got somewhere where that can be appreciated as well. There you go. Yeah. Well, at least we left the heavy one here. Yeah, that's true. That was a really <laughs> long one. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Brilliant. Much appreciate it. Thank you. And um, we'll be back in a little while to sort the other one out. All right. Yeah. It's been Thanks. a lovely All day. Right. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. 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 Have a bye safe bye. journey. Cheers. See you later. We literally bought the kitchen sink. We did. If there was a competition. Fabulous. For the world's heaviest kitchen sink. Was it that bad? Yeah, it's just right up there, yeah. Really? Great thing, though. Superb. Do you know when we were walking through the gardens, uh -huh. and he said, he just said one thing, he went, wonder what happened to that old stone bench we had around here? The second he said that, I pretty much envisaged... It's the period of architecture that really gets me. Beautiful. So I'm going to be really boring 
all day. Should we go in and have a look? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We are in my idea of heaven. We're in a wonderful 18th century English country house, and there's bits that are exciting me all over this building. Right, we're, we're not even through the door, and there's a few things here. Instantly, these two tables. OK. I hadn't even crossed my mind. Uh... Well, Jacobean Revival, uh, 1920s to 40s, something like that, but still really quite a good-looking thing. Then that one there, which I should imagine you, w at one time, would have had lots of. We've got more, but not that size. Not, that's the biggest one. I think so. It's sort of a hayrake table, sort of, that style stretcher there. Oak, 1910 to 20, somewhere around there. Um, that would be of interest. I don't know if you want to get rid of that one or any of the others, but I'd be of interest. It's quite to possible. Them. I can show you the others as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good news for you is that it's not just a few hundred quid. They're quite valuable. OK. And I'd want to buy them all. Just stepping through the front door, immediately, can't miss it, there's two big dining tables. You've got a sort of Jacobean revival trestle table there in oak plank top, nice. And then across from it is a hay rake table. It's just got the most beautiful look to it. It's in the condition you want to find one in. It's utterly untouched, but it's been used a lot gently. That's exactly what you want. So we're going to have right down into the cellar now. Whoa. This is old. We thought it was an oak sink. Is that correct? It is. That's wow. available if you're interested. Yeah. That's a great thing. I'm just going to weigh a ton. Yeah, that is really heavy. I think we're going to struggle with that. We can walk it round. Yeah. What do you think is? Oak construction. The way that the oak is cut for the frame is pit sawn. That's really old. That's just what you want to find. One of them is still lined in copper.